Hello once again, I am Jim Ducart with TND How Videos. Today we will go high above a field in northeastern Pennsylvania to see how to find and fix failing overhead splices. Our participating utility is PPL Electric Utilities. This video is sponsored by Classic Connectors, makers of the Clamp Star shunt splice that we will see in this video to fix the splice. Haverfield Aviation is providing helicopter services. SensorLink Corporation is providing a radio ohm stick for pre and post installation resistance testing. And Hotshot Infrared Inspections will be showing us forward looking infrared videography. And in fact, let's start with that infrared videography, the find portion of finding and fixing a failing splice. You see underneath this helicopter here a video camera mounted on a gimbal suspended from the bottom of the helicopter. You see him here maneuvering that gimbal and that will be used to fly the line and look at the splices on the line. Again, you can see that camera underneath the helicopter as it approaches the line here to do its readings. And let's take a look inside the helicopter. This is the aerial thermographer using hand controls to maneuver that gimbal and you see the splices showing up there on his monitor. Zoom in a little bit, see if we can see that a little better. And next we're going to see some footage from a different flight that shows what the infrared camera picks up. The original footage is in black and white and what they're looking for are the white areas, the hotter areas. So in this case we see both a white or hot splice and a black or colder splice side by side on the screen and the video is later converted to a colorized version showing more detail for the utility to analyze. So now let's return to our Pennsylvania splice that we have determined needs repair. And the first task here is going to be to take some resistance readings with this radio ohm stick attached to the hot stick here, the orange hot stick. And we see our aerial lineman taking readings on both sides of the splice as well as the bare conductor wire. And in this case, the bare conductor reading shows 12 micro ohms and side one of the splice shows 10 micro ohms. Side two of the splice shows 53 micro ohms. This tells us the resistance ratio is 4.42 and based on these readings we now know that one side of the splice has more than four times the resistance as the conductor that is connecting, thus a splice in need of repair. Another thing to point out here is that the radio ohm stick sends its status and measurements to both the remote display that you see here on the helicopter platform and the radio ohm stick software on a user's laptop. It combines that with GPS data to give both the location and condition of connectors. So now that we've got our resistance ratings, let's approach this energized 230 kV transmission line and the first thing is to dry brush the line where we're going to connect our clamp star shunt splice. And since all clamp star units are pre-filled with high temperature inhibitor designed especially for use on aged or weathered conductor, clean dry brushing is all that is necessary. So now we can see the aerial lineman install the clamp star shunt itself. We see that rope in the middle as a safety precaution. He uses that rope to temporarily fasten the clamp star to the conductor. Next, he will slide on the first of two attachment heads and tighten one fastener to keep everything in place. Then he will use an impact driver, sometimes called a rattle gun, to tighten the fasteners and they have a torque shear feature assuring the proper torque level is attained. You see that these attachments snap off as, he, as they get the, to the right torque level. This reduces overall installation time and eliminates the need for a torque wrench up on the helicopter. You see this process even more clearly from the ground here. Some excellent footage also shows you the windy conditions that our aerial linemen and helicopter pilot have to deal with on this installation. And then we complete the clamp star shunt installation by repeating that process of uh, tightening the fasteners on the other side of the splice. And so now there is one final task on this job. You can see this is a couple of days later. The sun is out. The snow is now gone. We are now taking resistance readings of the repaired splice. 
The resistance on the left side of the clamp star is 8 micro ohms. And next, our aerial lineman moves to the right side of the clamp star, where the reading will be 7 micro ohms. And then lastly, take a reading of the bare line itself. This resistance is found to be 12 micro ohms, meaning that the resistance of the repaired connection is less than the resistance of the line, and the line is now in like new condition. And so now you have seen our TND How video on how to find and fix failing overhead splices. You have seen the initial discovery of a high resistance splice using infrared thermography, followed by an ohm stick inspection and verification and then permanent restoration to better than the splice's original integrity using a clamp star shunt splice. Our participating utility was PPL Electric Utilities. Sponsors included Classic Connectors, makers of the clamp star shunt, Haverfield Aviation, SensorLink Corporation, and Hotshot Infrared Inspections. I am Jim Ducart with TND How Videos. Thank you as always for watching.